to illustrate the treatment of uh, finance leads, let's assume that uh, a company, say Enrich um, Limited, has acquired an item of plants on the leasehold um, basis. Now, um, the question is, how much could he or how much could a company acquire this asset if they were buying it outright? Assuming that the market value, so the market value or the cash price of um, the assets, if they were acquiring it immediately, is um, maybe 300 50,000. But the company opted to go in for a finance lease. So if they went in for the finance lease, what is the terms of the finance lease? Assuming that it is a four year lease, right, which requires an initial deposit. So there is an initial deposit of, let's say, 100,000. Now, do we have installments? Assuming that we are required to make annual installments of um, 80,000 each for how many years? Let's say four years. Now, the next thing is that the 80,000 we'll be making at the end of each year. We can be making it at the end of each year or we may be making it at the beginning of each year. The least then you have to state when the 80,000 will be paid. Because the 80,000 could be paid in advance or it could be paid in arrears. Arrears means that you pay at the end of the period after you have uh, had the use of the asset. So for instance, we use the assets from January through December, then we make the first installments um, at the end of December. Advance means that we make the first installment at the beginning of the year, then we have the use of the assets. Now, depending on whether it is an advance payment or an arrears payment, our computations will be affected. For now, let me assume that we are going by an arrears. So we make an initial deposit of 100,000, then at the end of every relevant year, for the next four years, we are going to pay 80,000. Now, if you do that, what it means is that there is going to be some interest. So, what is the interest rate implicit in the lease? What is the interest rate implicit in the lease? Assuming that it is giving us 22% per annum. So, the interest rate that is going to be applied on this lease agreement is at the rate of uh, 22%. Now, this would um, typically be given you in, in the question, right? Now, again, we'd also have to look out for, I've already stated that we are going for a four years um, uh, lease term, right? Now, the next thing we need to appreciate is whether at the end of the lease, there's going to be an option fee, there's going to be a guarantee residual um, value, whether the lease is going to own the assets after the lease term and all that. All that information would be uh, provided. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that the DC will own the asset. Since we have ascertained that this is a finance lease, we know that we need to capitalize. So capitalize the assets in the books of the DC. So in the books of the DC, we are going to capitalize these assets. Now, how do we capitalize the assets? We know that to capitalize the assets, there are two values we need. The first value is the fair value or the market value, which would be given. In our instance here, it is given as 350,000. So I know my fair value to be um, 350,000. The next value I need is the present value, the PV, of the minimum lease payments. So I need the present value of the minimum lease payments. Now how do we compute the present value of the minimum lease payments? I'm going to use a very simple uh, present value um, tables and we'll use that one to determine the PV of the minimum lease payment. We are making an initial payment of 100,000 followed by 80,000 every year for four years. What is the present value of all these sums? That's all we are going to compute. I'm going to put up a simple table. I'll start with my period 
then I will have my payments and the payments are my lease um, rent out or my lease um, payment then I'm going to bring a discount factor now this discount factor at what rate at the interest rate implicit in the lease which is given as 22 uh, percent then I will multiply the payments by the discount factor and that will give me my present values now since my payment starts from an initial deposit which is normally made immediately it means that we are going to start from period zero because we pay an amount immediately which is now in finance now is denoted uh, with a period zero my lease term is for a period of four years and i'm paying on annual basis so my period is going to be one two three four how much am i paying for each of these periods in period zero i'm paying hundred thousand that is the initial deposit which is made which is made uh, immediately then every year will pay 80,000, 80,000, 80,000, 80,000. So for each of the next four years, I'm going to pay 80,000 uh, installments. Let's come on to discount factor. Now to calculate the discount factor at the rate of 22%, we can use the uh, formula. We know the normal formula for the discount factor is 1 divided by 1 plus R raised to the power N, where R represents the rate. In our instance, here, it is the interest rate implicit in the lease, which is 22%. N represents the relevance um, year or period, right? So in period 1, N is going to be 1, in period 2 is going to be 2, 3, in that order. So it is essentially going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.22 raised to the power, say, 2 in period 2 or raise the power 3 in period 3 and that order, right? Now, when we do that, our discounts are factors for period 1 is always 1 because A number raised to the power 0 is 1. So for period 1, it is going to be 1. For, I mean, for period 0, it's going to be 1. For period 1, it is 0 0.820. Of course, these figures are going to come from discount table, or you can use a calculator to compute them. 0 0.672 for period um, 2, 0 0.551 for period 3, and then 0 0.451 for period 4. All these values are actually going to come from discount tables, or you could use your calculators to compute them. You can confirm um, those values. Once I have my discount factors, I will multiply my payments by the discount factors. So, pure zero, it is 100,000 payments multiplied by a discount factor of one, which will give us 100,000. In period one, it is 80,000 multiplied by the discount factor, which will give us 65574. Um, so 65574. In period 2, we are going to multiply uh, the same amount and we'll get 53749. 53749. In period 3, the amount is 44057. For then in period four, it is 36112. So in all instances, all we have done is to multiply the respective payment for a particular period by the discount factors. In period zero, discount factor is always one. So hundred times one, which is that eighty thousand times zero point eight two zero gives us that eighty thousand times that gives us this. So now we have the present value for the minimum. Um, lease payments for each of the relevant years. What we are going to do next is to sum the various present values and that will give us 299491. So sum is 299491.
And this is a figure we call the present value PV of minimum lease payments. So the present value of the minimum lease payment is given as 299491. So I'll come back here and then put that figure there, right? So I'm having uh, PV, let me take off this. So this is 299491. 299491, that is the PV of the minimum lease payments. The fair value is 350. Our criteria is to look out for the lower of the two. So we compare the two and look out for the lower. Obviously, the lower of the two is 299491. And that is the PV. That is the PV of the minimum lease payments. So from this illustration, what it means is that the amount I'm going to capitalize will be 299491. Now that I know the amount to capitalize, the next thing I'm going to do is to find out how long am I going to depreciate this asset. So I'm going to talk about depreciation. Now we've realized that when it comes to depreciation, there is the first question we are asking ourselves and that is, does uh, at the beginning of the lease, did we have reasonable certainty that the LC is going to own the assets after the lease term? If the answer is yes, right, so do we have that reasonable certainty that ownership will transfer to the LC? If the answer is yes, then what it means is that we are going to use the depreciation policy of the company. If the answer is no, then we are going to use the lower, or let me use shorter, the shorter of two things. The shorter of the least, the shorter of the least term, and the depreciation policy of the company, which is also the same as the useful life of the company. Of course, this is also known as the useful life of the assets. So this is what um, it all means. For depreciation, we will ask the question, at the inception of the lease, was there a reasonable certainty that transfer of ownership of the assets would be made to the LC? If the answer is yes, meaning that at the end of the lease term, the LC is going to own the assets, then we we'll depreciate the assets using the depreciation policy of the company, or better still, using the useful life of the assets um, for, for, for the company. If the answer is no, then we need two criteria the least term and then the useful life or the depreciation policy of the company, the shorter of these two. Now let's come on to uh, our question here. Our question has given us uh, a lease term of four years. So we know the lease term to be four years. But what is the depreciation policy for this um, company so far as this asset class is concerned? Let's assume that for depreciation, the actually depreciates depreciation rate is 20% on straight line 20% on straight line if you are translating that into years it gives you uh, 5 years that's 100 divided by 20 so that gives you 5 years so what it means is that the useful life of the asset is actually five years. Now, putting this into our criteria, what we are going to do, and this one is five years, that's useful life. What we are going to do is to ask the question, at the beginning of the lease term, do we have reasonable certainty that um, the asset is going to be transferred, or ownership of the asset will eventually be transferred to 
the lease. If the answer is yes, we will depreciate this asset over five years. If the answer is no, we will look out for the shorter of five years, which is the useful life, and the lease, which is four years. Then in that case, we will be depreciating this asset at the rate of what? Um, at over four years. Now, in our instance, we have already, already assumed that the assets would, uh, ownership of the asset would eventually be transferred to the DC. In actual fact, if it comes to finance lease, that is a normal assumption unless you are told um, otherwise. So, since ownership will be transferred, it means that I'm going to go by the depreciation policy of the company, which is five years or 20% on straight line basis. So, if that is the case, then it means that my annual depreciation is going to be equal to 299491, which is the cost of the assets capitalized, divided by the lease period of five years. So 299 divided by five years will give us 598699. Um, so I'll put that here, 59899. So that is in series. So our annual depreciation will come to 5. Nine eight nine nine. Of course, depreciation is a PNL item, so it will be written up to the PNL account. Then the accumulated depreciation will be deducted from the cost of the asset, which we know as two nine nine four nine one on the balance sheet or the statements of financial uh, position. Sometimes the, you are asked to show your income statement extracts, your PNL account extracts. And other times, you are also asked to show the statement of financial position or the balance sheet extract. So let's see how the figures would appear on your income statement and also on the balance sheets. 